is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I have a different kind of video for you. I wanted to, now that I have used our new trimmer for an extended period of time, I got one about as soon as I could order one. Um, and I really want to, to go over the trimmer with you and the value because I know in November it's available for customers. And so I thought I would take a minute and go through the trimmer and all of the pieces. And I've seen a couple of videos where people are going through it and some of them have covered some things and some others have covered other things. And so I'd like to kind of go through a comprehensive list with you about the new trimmer and uh, why I like it. And I do like it. And I would tell you if I didn't. So uh, let's just get started. Okay, so here is the trimmer. Now, I hope you folks understand Stampin' Up! didn't just decide to do a new trimmer because they didn't have anything better to do with their time. <laughs> the problem was the manufacturer apparently decided that he didn't want to make the blades anymore, or, or they didn't want to make the blades anymore. So Stampin' Up! was thrust into a situation where they really needed to have retire that trimmer because they couldn't get blades for it uh, for us and uh, come up with a new scheme. So uh, I'm going to set the trimmer this way on my board here so you can really see all of it from top to bottom. Now, just like the old trimmer, there are two blades, one for cutting, the dark one is for cutting, and one for scoring. Now, the, the big difference that I see on this, and I'm going to take this blade out so I can show you. And the way you remove your blade, right down here, there is a widening, just a little V in the, in the channel that you cut right down here at the bottom. And that is the place that you can get your your blade to and then you can take it out and you can put it right back in at that same place. Very easy to do. You grab the handle and you pull it out okay. or put it in. This is the old blade and I'm going to turn that a couple of different ways in the light so you can see it. It's this tiny little blade mechanism right here and I'll bring it up and hopefully you can see that. Um, I'm gonna turn it to the side so you can see the blade and turn it this way so you can see it. Now this is the new blade and you can see, if I can get it up here, um, how much bigger that blade is compared to the other blade. It is both uh, a bigger blade piece here, and it is longer and much bigger. And I'll bring the other one up so you can see the difference. And I have them pointing at one another. This blade on this side is easily three times the size of this blade and the mechanism itself is larger as well. I hope you can see that and I'm trying to move it here in the camera a couple of different ways so that you really get a good comparison of how they're different. I'm going to turn them sideways so you can see the difference in the blades and then turn them back up this way so you can see. This is the blade that came with my trimmer when I got my new trimmer and I started using it right away and I will tell you that it is cutting beautifully and this trimmer will cut two pages of white cardstock, Whisper White, just as easily as it cuts one. And you don't need to, in the old trimmer, you used to have to kind of push down and push. And on this one, you just glide it across and it cuts. And it will cut two pieces of paper perfectly. 
Now I'm going to bring this up so you can see here. On the old trimmer, we would quite often get a lip. In fact, this piece of paper on this end was cut with the old trimmer, and I don't know if you can see that lip on there, but it's there. And maybe you can see it if I lay down part of it. Uh, it's definitely got an edge to it. Now this was cutting two pieces of paper on this edge here, and there is no lip. So from the standpoint of getting cleaner cuts, there is no question about that. The blade is more substantial. Like I said, I've been using this same blade since I got it about a month and a half ago, and it is still cutting absolutely pristinely. So as far as that was another thing that was very annoying about the old trimmer is the blade life. Uh, I cut a lot of paper um, for my card classes, for the videos for swaps. I'm involved in all kinds of groups that do swaps. And so I am cutting constantly. And it, the old trimmer, I would go through about a blade a month. And I'm a month and a half, and this one is showing no signs of wear, none. So from the standpoint of being more substantial and lasting longer, there is no question in my mind. All right, now, um, the, the, the other thing that I kind of like about this other blade here that scores, and I got out a piece of designer series paper on purpose here, because one of the problems with the old blade is that you could tear your paper with just the uh, score blade. And this has laid down a little a little um, score on that designer series paper and there's no way that that is damaged. In fact, you have to go over it several times uh, and on cardstock, let me get a piece of colored cardstock here, it does the scoring, it feels like it's not doing anything, and yet when you're done you've got a nice score uh, on your paper. The thing that I like most about it is that it doesn't tear up my designer series paper when I go to score, because lots of times um, I've been known to just cut it right in half. <laughs> so this, in my opinion, is a much better um, scoring tool. Now, it doesn't have the old channel. The other one had a removable channel, and mostly for me it fell out and was laying on the floor most of the time. And it, it had a locking me mechanism. Now this one doesn't have a specific locking mechanism, but there is a little something right up here, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a little bump right here, right where there's an indentation. And when this closes here, there is a, on the reverse side of this little bar, there's an indentation on this side where that little bump goes into a spot and it's directed by this little indentation here and this edge to go right to that same spot every time. So you get the effect of having locked your your thing. It won't fly open, but you do have to pull on it to get it open, and it does feel like it kind of locks in place. Now, um, somebody suggested that you learn to open it from the top so that you, you get past that. It doesn't seem to matter to me one way or the other. It opens just as easily from the top or the bottom or from the middle. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it has, that's different from the old um, machine, is that it has uh, measurements, it, they both had measurements at the top and the bottom, but this one also has measurements in the middle. So that if you have a shorter piece of paper and you're trying to get a clean one inch uh, strip, you can see exactly here in the middle on a shorter piece of paper where you are. And the grid lines uh, help with that. The one thing that I find um, a little, un it's not annoying, it's just different. And it's all a matter of 
getting new, new, used to a new scheme. And I saw somebody do this the other day, and I'm going to see if I can't, can't do that. And let's see. No, I don't want to use that. Um, I'm going to grab some washi tape. And the reason is on the old machine, the inches were at the top and the centimeters were at the bottom. Being the creature of habit that I am, I've gotten used to that scheme. And I find myself occasionally trying to measure something against the um, centimeters instead of the inch uh, margin or the inch marker. Okay, and I saw somebody do this the other day. And what they did was, the arm, by the way, does come off. And they took a piece of washi tape and put it over the centimeters across the top of the machine. Now, it doesn't seem to bother me on the bottom because the inches are on the, on the edge. But they took a little piece of washi tape and they covered up the uh, centimeters and for somebody like me that doesn't ever use centimeters now for people who use both people in the UK for instance often give their measurements in both centimeters and inches now that's going to help me quite a bit because now I just don't see those centimeters at the top and I can set up to do my marking just the way I need to now one thing somebody said uh, that bothered them about the new trimmer was that when you got over to this side you couldn't you didn't have the um, inches that go all the way down and I will say that this division between the centimeters and the inches on this arm is exactly five and a half so you do get a line all the way down for five and a half that would help you keep things um, square. Um, and then five inches, um, if I remember right, five inches is leaving just a tiny little margin on here. As long as it's straight as it's going down, it's fine. It doesn't bother me, but it does bother some other people. The other thing that has bothered some people is the fact that there is a lip on this edge, so you can't go past here. And it is right at six inches. Well, if you work with a lot with designer series paper, oftentimes a 12 by 12 sheet, you'll need to cut down to six inches. So that, in that case, is fairly handy. Now, the arm extends just the way the other one did. And it comes up and allows you to cut all the way up to 17 inches across here. And your cutting blade is over here so you can see where you are. And as long as you have a, a square edge at the top, that shouldn't be any part of a problem. Now this swings back down and there is a little indentation right here on this end. Let's see if I can turn that up so you can see it right here and that slides into this piece here so that slides in there and is secured okay this little thing up here at the top for those of you that like to do uh have your your board hanging that will um hang on your wall which i think is is pretty good the other thing that used to drive me a little bit batty on the other score, I mean on the other machine, was the fact that I couldn't see these numbers on this side. And so what I did on that machine was I cut a little strip of paper, and I'll just do that right now, and oh, I took my blade off. <laughs> So I have to put it back in. So now you can see uh, whether I'm telling the truth. Yes, it goes right back in. And there is that little piece of card. And what I, what I did with that little piece of card is I put 
some glue all along it. And I glued it to the inside of this measure here. And I'm going to start it at zero. And come all the way down and put that into place on that edge. And then I can see these numbers on this side perfectly. And that's not going to interfere with my paper in my trimmer. In fact, I need to take a tiny little edge, maybe a sixteenth of an inch off of the edge of that, and I can do that off camera. Um, another thing that people said bothered them about this, doesn't bother me, um, but was that they got used to cutting and sliding their paper back across this way. And I think this is one of those things, like I say, it's just habit. We have to learn to slide it across this way to take it out of the machine because of this lip that's here. And frankly, if we'd started out with this one, uh, we'd have trouble getting used to going the other way. So when you, when you finish your cutting, you're going to more easily slide your paper this way. Another thing that I really like about this trimmer is right down here on the bottom, and it's at the same at the top and the bottom. If I have a very small piece of paper, in the old trimmer I could never get it set close to the cutting blade because there this was open and it was hard because they wanted to slide down across in here. This has got two additional ridges that holds your paper absolutely securely. I think the arm on this trimmer also holds your paper better than the other one did and there's no wiggling back and forth. I've cut that to a half an inch. I'm going to cut this one at a quarter of an inch and again I'm going to just it, would, it was Herculean effort to get the other one to stay put and not move your paper. So there I've cut down to a quarter of an inch and all I did was lay it across. I'm going to try one more here. Get it set in here and see if I can get that cut. It absolutely holds my paper completely without any wiggling or moving. And that is infinitely better than the other machine. It was uh, frustrating to, to cut anything less than um, a quarter of an inch. And if you had a small piece of paper to start with, it was even worse. So let's cut this piece of paper down to four inches. And then I'm going to see if I can take off a sixteenth of an inch on this trimmer. And there it is. It will cut the tiniest little slivers of paper absolutely dead straight. So I think this is a far superior machine than the other machine that we had. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, it's got a slimmer profile because there is no storage on the bottom side of this. It does have a whole bunch of these rubber feet. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rubber feet uh, on the bottom of this. So that's another thing. When you set it down, that is not going to move around on you. Let me put it this way so you can see that. It's going to be absolutely stable. Now on this one, when you do get the blades, you're going to get four blades and I got to tell you, that's going to last you. Uh, for a casual crafter, I think that that will, those four, four blades could last you uh, the better part of a year. Um, for someone like me, I still have no idea because I haven't gone through this. I'm at a month and a half. Um, so I, I'm looking forward 
to how much longer that's going to going to last. As for maintenance, it does come with a screen or a little film on here, and I have just left mine in place. Uh, you can certainly peel all of that away, but right now I'm leaving it in place and I haven't taken it off. And cleaning this one is not dissimilar to cleaning the other one. You just have to get something that's small enough to get in the track to get it cleaned. And you can take, uh, this is a baby wipe here, and just put that in the track and up and down. And it did take out a little bit of, a little bit of, debris and it doesn't hurt to to trim these per periodically and keep them maintained and if you don't have this at the edge of a piece of paper coming down through here will clear that out just as well and I can see up here at the top I'm going to have yep some stuff in there and you can bring that just down the track to the end and it's very easy to keep that track clean. So I would say that on the whole, I am very pleased with this trimmer. Um, I think that uh, this is far superior to the one we had. The blades are better, they're more substantial, they cut better, the machine holds your paper better, there's no wobbling. I think it's much more stable. It has a thinner profile because there's no storage under this one. It can hang up if you want it to do that. It's got more stabilizing pieces down here on either end to hold smaller pieces of paper in place. In fact, I used it to score something I cut with the Christmas tree branch and the little uh, the little stem of the tree fit right in between and held it steady so I was able to score my trees um, perfectly uh, and, and pretty darn easily as well. So uh, that's it. I just wanted to spend some time and go over the trimmer now that I've really had some time and I wanted to give it a good workout before I came on and said much about it. But I'm really pleased with it. I think it is um, uh, a step up for us and the beauty of it, it also is it's cheaper. So this machine is $25 and is available to customers and then the new blades, the replacement blades will be available uh, right after the first of the year um, but this blade is going to last you well beyond <laughs> the first of the year. So um, uh, again, that's it. I just wanted to come on and do my own review because like I said, I've seen people do bits and pieces, but um, I wanted to do my spin on it because I, I have different kinds of things that I look for than maybe some others do. Now, this is November and I'm probably on my way to on stage by now. And uh, so I'm looking forward to doing swapping and getting lots of fun things to share with you when I come back. And I'll have uh, my hands on some of the new material that'll be in the occasions catalog and maybe even some of the celebration material. And um, I will be doing a paper share when I get back. I'll have the uh, details up on my blog once I have my hands on the catalog and know what papers we're talking about. Um, I'll have that up and we'll be um, taking orders in probably late November. All right, that's it for me. Uh, because it's November, my November prize draw is the uh, Christmas Rose Bundle, the dies and the stamp set, and one package of paper. And all you need to do to be in my drawing is place an order on my website, albedinger.stampinup.net, or you can get to it through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com. Uh, and we had a winner that had only been on my website once or twice. So this last month, Janine, and uh, 
She's given me her order and I have her stuff uh, ordered and on its way. So you can be a first time person on my website and win the drawing. <laughs> so that's it again for me. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I do so appreciate it. And I'll be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye. Thank you.